Thank you very much for the warm uh, introduction. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to share a uh, presentation with you. And um, please let me know, uh, or, or Wayne, uh, through the chat, if anybody can't see anything, um, just, just, just let me know. So I'm going to um, kick things off with a, a, a short video um, just to go over, um, I guess, a little bit about the company, and then I'll obviously go into more detail um, you know, a bit of the company history, uh, the how, the why, a bit about my, myself and my brother and um, some of the people that we employ and um, some of the, the kind of domestic uh, uh, space um, domain. So really looking forward to um, having a chat with you guys and I'll touch more on um, next steps just after this. So please enjoy. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, that was just a quick intro. Um, you might have noticed a couple of things there. Uh, some of the animation actually was um, uh, in support through, uh, through Tate Queensland. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And some of that composition on the music was from a local uh, 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 company. And um, yeah, that uh, uh, video was able to touch on some, uh, some, some key highlights that I'll get uh, onto a bit later on. So um, thanks very much, Wayne and the NSSA for obviously setting this up. I'm, I'm um, very happy to be able to talk and converse uh, with you all today. I think I'll be chatting for about 20, 25 minutes, half an hour, whatnot, and there'll be a bit of a question and answer time. And uh, I'll share my details um, afterwards. So if you want to reach out, um, 
yeah, happy to kind of converse. I uh, can't tell you I'll get back in a timely manner. Uh, it's a bit of a death by email uh, at the moment, but that's, um, that's not a problem at, at all. So yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, as Wayne did mention, I'm the co-founder and chief operating officer at, uh, uh, at Gilmore Space uh, Technologies. Um, we're based in, um, in Gold Coast. We currently employ about um, 55 people. I'll touch on some of their roles and responsibilities uh, a bit later on. And so essentially we're a leading rocket company based in Gold Coast uh, and we're developing uh, and building uh, small launch vehicles or, or rockets um, using hybrid uh, propulsion uh, rocket technology. So you might wonder what uh, hybrids uh, are. Well, there's uh, about three types of rockets traditionally. Um, there is the solid rocket, which is, uh, uh, uses a rubber-like material uh, embedded with a uh, solid oxidizer and cast in a mold. Uh, the fuel chamber is the uh, uh, engine and uh, the thrust is a function of the, uh, of the fuel burn rate. Um, come on, Lizzie. Got to turn the phone on silent, mate. Um, so people uh, uh, traditionally associate solid uh, with the space shuttle uh, uh, boosters. And then there's the more uh, traditional form uh, called liquids and they use a, a liquid oxidizer and a liquid fuel, uh, which are mixed in a combustion chamber and uh, ignited. Um, that's typically seen on um, launch vehicles such as SpaceX's uh, Falcon and Rocket Lab's uh, Electron. Now hybrids um, use a, a, a bit of a combination of both. So uh, hybrids traditionally use a liquid oxidizer and a solid fuel. So the liquid's injected uh, into a fuel chamber and ignited and thrust is a function of the oxidizer and uh, flow burn rate. So uh, we think hybrids are, are pretty cool. Uh, they have throttling capability and other um, uh, particular characteristics like safety, uh, minimum viable, uh, um, a, a minimum environmental impact. Uh, so traditionally green uh, propellants, uh, lower life cycle costs, responsiveness, uh, increased uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, competitive uh, performance, uh, increased liability and uh, uh, shutdown um, uh, functions. So uh, our mission is in the, long, uh, uh, in the short term is to launch small satellites uh, to space, uh, specifically into low orth orbit uh, with the first commercial launch slated for, for mid-22 uh, and obviously the longer term and I'll touch on a bit later. Um, uh, we'd like to send humans uh, uh, to space and um, some other things like moon and Mars missions, deep space missions, and a few bits uh, like that. So um, our vision statement is all orbits, all planets for the benefit of humanity. Uh, all orbits uh, because we think that our rockets have the capability to uh, deliver satellites and spacecraft uh, to most, uh, if not all, uh, commercial orbits in LEO within the next uh, five years, and then moon to Mars orbits um, from 2026. Uh, all planets, because ultimately, like people that you'd probably be familiar with, like Elon Musk, um, we believe that it's inevitable that humanity uh, will become a multi-planetary um, species, and for that, we'll be uh, needing tra transportation. So, uh, I'll just go on to the next one. Sorry, I should have, should have skipped over that. So uh, um, part, part, <clears throat> part of the problem, so um, the various reports indicate that there are about um, 20 to 30,000 satellites that need to be launched uh, in the next decade um, to specific orbits and there is just not enough um, supply to fill that uh, demand. So um, there's very limited opportunities uh, for launch. Um, I can obviously attest uh, to that, and there's some other factors that I will um, speak on about that a bit later. Uh, there are only a handful of commercial uh, rocket companies to choose from right now, not, not including China. Um, most of them cater to actually big satellites and obviously who have long um, waiting times and, uh, and such. And then the situation is even uh, more dire uh, or worse for, for people that have small satellites uh, because your most likely option will be to piggyback 
or ride share on someone else's uh, launch vehicle, which means you had no control over where and uh, when and how your uh, satellite um, will be deployed. Also, um, some very interesting points is that uh, launch prices are still very high. Um, for the small satellite players out there, um, yes, it's a lot cheaper than it was kind of 10 years ago, but we're still talking about uh, 35 to $50,000 US per, uh, per kilogram, which is a lot of money um, if you're trying to build um, low cost satellites. So um, what we're doing to um, solve that problem in a nutshell, this is me in a nutshell, anyway, small joke. Um, we're looking to uh, uh, solve that by addressing the, the bottleneck and by offering, offering more dedicated uh, LEO launches to uh, small satellite cu customers um, with obviously rideshare options a, as well. And we plan to do that at a more cost effective uh, prices, which will obviously um, uh, enable more business and growth in this exciting new uh, market. Um, so much so that a lot of our customers uh, or peers have um, spent uh, in excess of $100 million uh, US to develop a launch vehicle capability. Um, we're looking to, um, to do it for a $40 um, million US dollars and we're definitely on track uh, for that. So, um, next, next page. So, um, I guess the opportunities uh, for growth. So we are at the crossroads or what we like to call as a space renaissance uh, with new um, uh, smaller or light launcher vehicles in development. And obviously a lot of um, uh, satellite operators uh, um, who have obviously started and require that access to, to, to space. So uh, a lot of you may not know, but satellites, uh, you know, today do um, power or enable a lot of applications and technologies, which we essentially take for granted uh, today. Um, Earth observation satellites help farmers uh, manage their crops and livestock. Um, navigation satellites um, enable the GPS on, on, on people's phones uh, and help logistic companies uh, keep on track of their trucks and, uh, and ships. And obviously, uh, communication satellites enable mobile calls and bank transfers and everybody might use WhatsApp. So that uh, enables them and other th things like Skype and obviously uh, Zoom. Um, obviously, how we see it in the near future, the cost of satellites uh, uh, development and launch vehicles will fall further. Uh, constellations of smaller, cheaper uh, satellites in low Earth orbit uh, could enable even um, cheaper and faster mobile internet anytime uh, from anywhere on Earth. Um, autonomous vehicles is obviously a big play uh, in that space as well. And I think the, the, the bottom line, what, what the narrative of we're trying to, um, you know, influences low cost uh, satellites uh, uh, that are um, together with low cost uh, launch vehicle services open up a huge and uh, um, or an opportunity for a sovereign or indigenous um, space capability. And uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of that actually start to, to, um, uh, uh, to come to light. So um, our team, so 55 employees based in, uh, in Gold Coast. I think we've got a unique mix of uh, overseas talent and obviously local talent. Um, some I guess key highlights are uh, we've had to uh, bring over people from New Zealand, uh, America and, and Europe um, to take up senior uh, positions. And we've got quite a, a young and robust um, uh, uh, younger talent uh, that we've um, hired out from Australian universities and actually um, built them up to actually uh, be quite, um, you know, proficient in hybrid rocket technologies or other uh, aspects of the, uh, of the business. Um, we've got, uh, we developed the whole suite um, of uh, what you would define as a, a launch vehicle from the propulsion um, to avionics uh, software, GNC, uh, the structures, and then uh, legal um, and admin 
and obviously manufacturing, which is a huge um, uh, input to our um, uh, capability. So um, uh, just a couple of key highlights there. Um, we started the company um, in 2014 and uh, with a very small team um, and actually launched our first rocket on the 22nd of July, 20, 2016 out at uh, Westmar, um, west of Brisbane, about five hours west of, of Brisbane. And um, that was enough essentially for us to secure um, five million dollars in Series A uh, investment. Um, quite a, a, a pivotal time uh, because we were one of the early um, companies, space companies, to actually secure investment um, in Australia. Uh, also around the same time as uh, as Fleet, uh, who were developing uh, satellites for IoT uh, capability, um, based in uh, in South Australia. Um, and then from that. Uh, uh, we had a um, ambitious goal to launch um, the One Vision rocket that you see in the middle there, which was a 8.2 metre rocket, uh, fully fueled. It would have weighed about uh, 1,600 uh, kil kilograms. And um, because there's uh, limited or no infrastructure in Australia, we had to find a suitable lo location. And um, that was out uh, uh, just south of uh, Mount Isa, so some 2,000. Uh, kilometers away and um, that was a huge uh, uh, attempt in itself just to get to the launch pad. Uh, I think we had about 22 essential staff. Uh, one prime mover that um, that towed the mobile launcher that you see there um, that had the, the, the tower that would guide the unguided rocket. Um, a nine ton crane truck uh, to take some of the supporting uh, infrastructure, an eight ton uh, flatbed trailer that took the uh, ground control station, and then six Hilux uh, trucks that uh, towed four camper vans and the rest of us, including myself, uh, uh, camped under the um, under the sky. Um, so uh, uh, at about 11 seconds and uh, counting, we had uh, a uh, anomaly which led to an overpressurization and uh, caused a, uh, a rupture in the oxidizer tank. And uh, it was a failure that we couldn't uh, recover from. And there was a big uh, cloud of, uh, of steam. And so obviously uh, that was a hard pill to, 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 to swallow, but a significant achievement for us just to get to the, um, to the launch pad. Uh, we did a, 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 you know, an investigation um, into that, that uh, uncovered, um, some key takeaways that uh, uh, we're embedding into the fiber and fabric of, uh, of our company. Um, you know, a, a bit more engineering due diligence, uh, considerations from remote operations, data rates, a few other bits and, and pieces. Um, but what was some of the other key takeaways is we did demonstrate how safe hybrids were. We were, we pretty much bring uh, uh, the rocket um, and the, the the payload back in intact. There was limited or no damage um, to the to, to the launcher. Um, so something uh, I think uh, you you know key key. It does demonstrate how actually safe uh, hybrids are. Um, the other vehicle that uh, you see on the right is called uh, Eris, uh, the goddess of. Um, strife and discord and that's essentially what we're looking to do to the to the market um so uh, 215 uh, kilograms to sso which is a particular uh, uh orbit um we do have some exciting news uh we have secured our first um uh launch uh, a contract with a company called uh, space machines who are based in uh, in adelaide and so a, a significant, um, uh, I think, achievement for a company that doesn't have a, a launch vehicle. So um, PK and the team did a great job in terms of selling the vision and mission, um, the company, its values, ability to, to, to es ex uh, execute and obviously address um, uh, technical issues uh, as, they, as they come to light. Uh, the, I, I guess the other um, thing is a lot of people say, where are you going to launch from? 
So um, there isn't an operational facility just yet in, uh, in Australia. Obviously, Southern Launch are uh, looking to develop a capability at Whaler's Way. Um, I hope their upcoming uh, suborbital test flight um, is uh, uh, successful. And there's obviously ELA that uh, are looking to produce a uh, spaceport capability in Gove Northern Territory. And then recently the uh, Queensland government uh, announced its intentions uh, to look at an area called Abbott's Point uh, for a light launcher uh, spaceport capability. And the next phase with that is that they're going into a uh, technical and environmental um, uh, due diligence phase. So pretty exciting time, uh, I think, for uh, uh, operators um, in, in, in Australia. So um, I've got to make sure you're on this, um, this pick, Mr. Cairns, anyway. Uh, anyway, so this is just a snapshot of the Australian um, uh, space industry. Uh, we've seen a rapid growth um, recently over the last couple of years. Uh, it is important to note that uh, Australia was, I believe, the last OECD economy to have a, a space agency. And then from that, we've seen a significant um, growth in um, Australian companies looking to uh, participate in the uh, in the space domain and they do cover uh, a myriad of um, capabilities from um, the, 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 the typical upstream and downstream um, uh, services. Uh, I believe there is some data looking to come out just to confirm um, uh, the tremendous growth in the, uh, in the Australian uh, Space Agency, which is obviously very uh, warm and, um, and, and welcoming. Uh, so I think I'm, how long have I been going for? Yeah, so I think there's just one more um, element. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm gonna jump off this uh, um, presentation and um, definitely got some time for some, uh, for some Q and A. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I touched on some of those elements that you mentioned, um, Wayne. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to 